Greetings from Montana. I am currently on a backpacking trip. And in fact, I've been backpacking quite a bit this summer and I've been using a lot of new gear. So I wanted to break all of the new gear down and highlight some of my standout pieces. What's up everybody? I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. And today I'm going to be bringing to you my favorite or most standout pieces of the summer. So without further ado, let's break it down starting now. The first thing that I wanted to talk about today is the new Life Straw. This is the Peak Series one liter filter, the squeeze filter from Life Straw. And I've gotten a lot of questions about it here on social media in general as they've heard that I've been using this. And honestly, I like this so, so much. This is gonna be my go-to water filter for a long time to come. Mostly because it's so easy to use. Uh, I really like this improvement on this bag system that LifeStraw has. It's really easy to fill up. It's very similar to the Be Free system, as, as you might know, but the thing that makes this different is that this material is actually a good bit thicker. So it's more durable and less likely to get those pinprick holes that plague the Be Freeze. The other thing that I really like about it and that Kobu likes about it too, is that its price is super hard to beat. This is retailing for $38. That, is, the bugs here are crazy, by the way. Their classic straw is only $19. And this is using the same type of technology, but really just adding a bag with it. But the best thing about it is that it has really good flow rate. I don't have to squeeze this thing hardly at all for water to flow out. And so it's really easy to filter a liter at a time in really just like 20 or 30 seconds. So I really like its flow rate. I like how easy it is to keep with me. I've just been clipping it onto the front of my backpack and it's been great to use. And at $38, I really like this and think it's one of the best water filters on the market. One thing to note is that it's not a purifier. So this is going to be great for North America and water filters in the US when most of our sources are not contaminated with viruses because this will not remove viruses. But other than that, it is a great filtration system for your backpacking. And it's been great for me all summer long. Next on my list is the Jetboil Minimo and the skillet combination with the skillet plate. And this has been a development for me because as many of you know, uh, I have recently swore off at Jetboil and I started ditching them, made a video that uh, did fairly well and also caught the attention of Jetboil. So they reached out and they sent me the Minimo, uh, which the main difference between this and the flash that I had been using is that this actually has simmer control. So you can actually change the temperature, which is a big part of why I didn't like the flash and why all I was doing with it was just boiling water, which it is very fast at that, but I wasn't cooking real food. So I have recently been using this uh, Minimo, uh, which has seen some wear and tear. Uh, as a side note, last night, uh, some chipmunks or mice, not sure what, uh, got into camp and actually did quite a bit of damage. They started eating the uh, this kind of insulation around the jet boil. So side note, I need to do a better job of making sure that this is not accessible. But anyway, so it looks kind of funky, but it still works just great. And this is new for me. I have not really done a lot of backpacking lately, at least since my guiding days with bringing a skillet with me. And this is, I'm not sure what the name of this skillet is, but this comes from Jeb Boyle as well. But I really, really like it. Uh, it's got this nonstick surface that's really easy to cook on. And it, with the spatula, it has just been a joy to cook on. So the main thing is that you add this attachment here, um, which will elevate that skillet up and allow you to not just sear and burn your food. So it distributes the heat a lot more evenly when you're cooking like that. And then of course, if you just want the traditional jet boil version, you can remove that plate and you've got this thing. So I actually am a big fan of this. Uh, jet boil has done a good job with developing uh, alternative products, not just the flash that does rapid boil. So this has been a win for me and I've been really, really liking it. So behind me, you can see some clouds of building and we're probably going to have a rainstorm dump upon us tonight, like we did last night, which brings me 
to this sweet rain jacket. It's from Cotopaxi, and this has been a great rain shell, a great hard shell that I've been using a bunch now. I started using this trekking in Peru, and I've been doing multiple backpacking trips over the summer using this, and having a good hard shell is super important for backpacking. Not only is it a safety piece, it protects you from incoming rain, heavy winds, things like that, bugs even. It is just a really important thing to have for comfort. Uh, so I love hiking in just even a t-shirt and a hard shell, especially when I'm in kind of this alpine environment. A couple of the things I really like about Cotopaxi is that their goods are actually fairly low cost. This is less than half the cost of my other favorite rain jacket from Arcteryx. That's a $500 rain jacket. Uh, also, they do a lot of good with their profits, so I just appreciate what they're doing. It's a quality rain shell, and I've been totally digging it all summer long. One other thing that's nice about this is its sizable hood, which is good for going over helmets or just being able to fit big heads. So the next two items I'm gonna highlight together because they're not mine. Uh, they're actually my girlfriend Christie's, who have been trying out some new women's gear. But so one of the things that I wanted to highlight is her footwear. These are from Salewa. I believe these are the Alpen Rose 2. I might have to clarify that, but I believe that they're at least the Alpen Rose. Not sure if they're the one or the two. But getting a good piece of footwear has made a huge difference for Christie's hiking experience. So mainly being able to have the high boot and to have Gore-Tex on the boot. So she can tromp through these rivers, tromp through mud and not be concerned about it. And this is new for her to have good quality footwear, and these have made a huge difference. Some of this rubber that's coming around from the sole is starting to delaminate. So that is a little bit early on in its career uh, for that to be happening, but otherwise we've been super, super happy with these. Most importantly, Christy's been happy with them and she hasn't been developing hot spots and blisters, uh, even though we are going long days on the trail. So that has been really, really awesome. And next, Christy has been rocking a new backpack for her. This is the Bridger 55 liter women's pack from Mystery Ranch. If you're familiar with my work here, you probably know that I've been rocking a lot of Mystery Ranch gear for a long time. And so Christy got the Bridger 55 and it has been kind of a game changer for her because it's actually a comfortable pack that fits her really well. So this running vest style strap is kind of unique to women and uh, she's got actually some positive thoughts on how this fits for women. So we do have a whole other video reviewing specifically this pack, breaking it all down in its entirety, which we'll have a link to below as well. So if you wanna know more about this pack, check it out in the links below. Okay, next on my list is Comperdell's trekking poles. These are the Explorer Contour. And I have really been liking these a lot for multiple reasons. One, these are aluminum, which is not known for being lightweight, but these are phenomenally lightweight. In fact, they are often lighter than the trekking pole companies, alternative carbon fiber trekking pole companies. They are lighter than the competitors, carbon fiber trekking poles. These are super, super light. And because they're aluminum, they're far more cost-effective. These, I believe are like 130 or $140, which is still kind of expensive, but way more reasonable than 200 and even 300 and even sometimes they're even $400 trekking poles, which is just crazy expensive. And if you're not some sort of elite athlete, you just don't need these. So I really like that these aluminum poles are far more accessible to most people. A couple of the things that I really like, this locking mechanism is so easy and secure. I really love these locking mechanisms. They are bomber and I feel like I can put a ton of weight on these trekking poles and they're not gonna break and these joints are not gonna slide or have a problem. So Comperdell Explorer Contour or, yep, Comperdell Explorer Contour trekking poles. Boom, check them out. Okay, last on my list is the Hyperlite Mountain Gear Southwest 3400 backpack. Now, many of you know that I've been using a lot of Mystery Ranch packs. I've been using very comfortable, full-framed out backpacks that can carry heavy loads. So this is unique for me to try it out. But honestly, I've been really, really digging it. Also, we almost have a storm that's about to be upon us, so I gotta hurry this video up. But some of you might know, Hyperlite Mountain Gear makes really awesome backpacks that are exclusively used almost by 
ultra lighters. But one of the things that makes them really special is the fabric that they use. It's Dyneema fabric and it's basically waterproof. So once you've got this all rolled up, water's not getting in, which I do really like. Some downsides to it is that you've got a big tube. There's only one way in, one way out. You really have to think about how you are packing your backpack. It's not very easy to get at something that's in the bottom of your pack without taking everything out. I'm not used to that. I'm used to having multiple access points throughout my whole backpack so I can get at anything, anywhere, and anytime. That is very different for me. The other things that are not as good is these shoulder straps are super minimalistic. They're very lightweight. This is an ultralight backpack, so they're cutting corners everywhere to get weight down. But when I carry 40 pounds or more, this starts to really hurt my shoulders. So I don't like that. The max carry here recommended is about 40 pounds. And I agree that you shouldn't really carry more than that. Um, I do like some of these overflow pockets. They're really nice. Um, I like being able to just stuff stuff down the front. It actually holds quite a bit. And then there's some really good, and then there's also some really good hip belt pockets here as well that are even taped and waterproof. So it's a great place for a phone in case you're hiking in the rain or something like that. But you'll notice there's almost nothing going on here for back support, ventilation. There are two stays in here to give it some structure and that is it. There's almost no airflow, so it's not gonna be great for keeping your back sweat down. Um, but the other best thing about it is that it adjusts to the amount of gear that you're taking. So if you need it to be this big, you can totally have it be filled out at max capacity and it will still work. You can also have this be a really great day pack that will just cinch down really small as well and just be about like this. So I just did a big mission today and this was the perfect day pack for me. So I really like that as opposed to other packs where you kind of have these modular systems where you take the lid off or something like that. Having this go as a day pack is awesome. Okay. It is, oh, one other note, it is about $350 for this retail, so it is a little bit pricey, especially for something that's such a simple backpack. But because the materials included are so high-end and so expensive to source and manufacture with, that's why it's about $350. So that's my gear list. I hope you enjoyed it. Give me a list of your favorites or what you're trying out. I want to hear from you. The bugs are getting heinous. The rain's about to come down, so I got to wrap this up. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up and are subscribed here to Backpacking TV. I'm Eric Hansen. I'm about to go hunker down for a big storm. See you later, everybody.